Good evening, my name is Gant Bachela, and I have a special message for those of you who are parents of wee little ones. Today's art project is a special one for papas, or padres, or fathers, or dads. To be prepared, you will need paper, white or colored, a glue stick, markers, scissors, oh yes, and please save an extra piece of paper for each child for later in this lesson. For worship, we always recommend an area large enough for kids to really stretch their wings and fly around. Also, you can find this week's activity sheet at northcoastchurch.com. Fly around until you find the children's ministry tab and click on the Acts for Kids series. As always, I will see you again very soon, for I am the Count, and I love to count with you. Professor Hillikin, have you seen my dad? You haven't? Okay, thank you. Raj, Ali, have you guys seen my dad? No, Ali, I haven't seen him. Ugh. But I'm sure Merle has. She knows everything. Merle! Merle! Oh, oh Merle! Merle! Oh, oh, hey, Allison. Are you ready for your memory verse? Yeah, I was just about to do it, but I still can't find my dad anywhere. It's been like an hour. That is so strange. I know. All right, let's go look for him. Okay, thank you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa, wait, what? Wait, wait. Yeah, I, know, yes. I know you love counting. I love to count. I know, but have you seen my dad anywhere? Let, mm, let me think about this one. One, two, three, seven, fourteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Nope, nope, I have not seen him. You I'm sorry. Haven't? Sorry, I have not seen him. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Hey, hey, hey. Allie, can I help you? Yeah, I'm actually looking everywhere for my dad right now. Huh, I haven't seen him. Not at all. No, nope. did you look outside? I'm gonna do that right now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> have you seen my dad? Um, no, but I have a map. <sighs> I'm going this way, thank you. Oh, ah. Dad? Oh. I've been looking everywhere. Happy oh. Father's Day. Oh, thanks, honey. Where have oh. you been? Bachelor didn't even know where you were. I told Bachelor I was going to take a snooze out here. Oh, he didn't tell me. Oh, goodness. Let's All go right. worship. I know. we got to worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
I can help him um, water the plants. I can help him water the plants in the garden. I can help him make a barbecue and, and clean up his office because it's very messy. We can wash the car. We can clean the living room. We can massage the sheet. We can water the apple tree. This Father's Day, I've been helping my dad with electrical and insulation in the shed, and I'll keep helping him with that, and in return he's teaching me how to use power tools and a bunch of different tools that will help me when I'm in the kitchen. Cook dinner. Cook dinner. I would also make dinner, breakfast, and lunch for him. Mm -hmm. Organizing the schools by color and washing the cars. I could make him wash out the espresso on ice. I can type some stuff on his computer because he usually asks me to type some stuff on his computer so I could do his work, like messages to other people. I'm gonna help him do yard work. First thing I like to do is I wake up super early, like really early, so I can get stuff done. I do all my chores and then I get him breakfast in bed and then I like to wash his truck because he's always asking for us to wash his truck and then I do it on Father's Day. I'm gonna train you to dance and jump on him. I'm gonna help Daddy by doing his chores. This week I am going to help Dad by putting away all my laundry. This week I am going to help Dad by picking up dog poop. And I can organize his documents because there's lots of them. Maybe I could put them in piles. By behaving and helping out with his chores. Shelby, I love being prepared. Do you? Being prepared is kind of just like being ready for whatever you're going to go do. Today, we are going to play a game. I'm going to give you a situation, and you're going to think of things that you need to be prepared. So, for instance, if we're going to the beach, all right, I'm going to show you an object, and you're going to give me a thumbs up if you think you need that to go to the beach. And you're gonna give me a thumbs down if you think I do not need that to be prepared to go to the beach. All right, here's our first one. Flip-flops. Do you think you need flip-flops to go to the beach? Hmm, thumbs up or thumbs down, what do you think? I know my feet get really hot on the sand, so I'm gonna give that one a thumbs up. I think we need flip-flops to be prepared. All right, our second one is a beach towel. Do you guys need a beach towel to go to the beach? I don't like sitting just on the sand, so I give that one a thumbs up too. Our third one is Legos. What do you think? Do we need Legos to go to the beach? Uh, I don't know about that one. I think they'd get lost in the sand. I don't think we need Legos. I'd give that one a thumbs down. Our next one is roller skates. Ooh, those are super fun. What do you think? Should we bring those to the beach? I'd give it a thumbs down. I think it'd be hard to do it on the sand. And our last one is sunscreen. What do you think? I think sunscreen's a thumbs up. It helps protect you from the sun. I hate getting sunburned. Good job. All right, now our next one is we're going to see what we need to be prepared to go to bed, all right? Let's see, our first one is a toothbrush. What do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Do we need a toothbrush in order to go to bed? I'd give that a thumbs up. I always brush my teeth before I go to bed. All right, our next one is a ladder. What do you think? Do you need a ladder to go to bed? I mean, maybe if you have a bunk bed, you might need a ladder, but I'd give that one a thumbs down. I don't think we really need a ladder. All right, 
Next one is a video game controller. What do you think? Do you need that to go to bed? For me, that keeps me awake. That would not put me to sleep, so I give that one a thumbs down. All right, our next one is the light switch. Oh, and it's off. Do the lights off help you go to bed? I think so. I'd give that one a thumbs up. All right, and our last one is a teddy bear. What do you think? Do you use like a teddy bear, a special blanket, or a different kind of animal to help you go to bed? I give that one a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for playing with me. And I just want you guys to remember that we can always be prepared to share Jesus wherever we go. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about that today. Good evening, my friends. Oh, and what a special evening it is in the human world. I hear you are all celebrating Father's Day. I hope it is fantastic for all father figures out there. Okay, have a wonderful day, and let's start the counting. Oh, look at these dad shirts. I love dad shirts, they're awfully cheesy. Let's count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six dad shirts, well done. Time to count the beards. Yes, the funny stuff that covers the human face. How many do you see? Let's count. One, two, three. Three beards. Aha, ha, surfboards. These are some very cool dads I see. Shall we count the surfboards? Let's begin. One, two, three. Four, four surfboards. You are all wonderful counters, my friends. See you next time. Oh, hi, guys. Oh, you guys caught me just in time. I'm getting ready to leave for an expedition up to the Sierra Nevada mountains, which is the eastern edge of California, to study the nesting habits of the mountain chickadees. I'm so excited. But before I go, I need to make sure that I am very prepared because I'm going to be heading out into the back country. Now first, before I do anything at all, I need to know where I'm going. And since I know that I'm going about 11,000 feet in elevation in the southeastern edge of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, I know number one, where to get my permit, what weather report to check, which map to get, and how to pack for that climate. Speaking of which, I need to pack. Now there is a tried and true list out there known as the 10 Essentials which was developed in the 1930s to help prepare people for emergency situations in the great outdoors. Now since then, backpackers and scientists like myself have developed that list into a system, which means that instead of each individual thing being just one item, some of the individual items actually mean a category of things that I need to pack. Well, let's get into it. The first thing I need in order to survive my expedition in the wilderness and be well prepared is navigation. Now, I always carry a map with me and a compass and a GPS, see? But it's also helpful to know things like how to find your way in the wilderness without a map, like finding the North Star. Next on my list, I need to make sure I have a headlamp with me. You know, you'd be surprised at how dark it gets in the wilderness, it gets so dark. So I need something like a headlamp to make it so I can see. And I also have to bring extra batteries, just in case. Next, I'm going to make sure that I have sun protection. You know, our skin is the largest organ in our body and it's so easy to get dehydrated on the trail because of too much sun exposure. So, I always make sure I wear a hat and sunscreen and long sleeves to protect my skin while I'm hiking. Fourth, I need a first aid kit. Now, my first 
first aid kit has other things in it rather than just medical supplies like a tent repair kit and rope just in case I need it. But I also have medications and blister repair and injury prevention, all kinds of good stuff in my first aid kit to help me keep safe on the train. Next, I always carry a knife. Now, knives can be really handy on the trail. I use them to cut cheese and salami for lunch. I also use it to cut ropes or repair things if I need to. But it's very important that when you use a knife, you use it properly so everyone stays safe. Next, we're getting into our first system of packing. Let me open my backpack up here. Yeah. First system is food. Now, when I'm on the trail, what I eat is really important because I want to make sure that I'm fueling my body for the trail. For example, even though I love Twinkies, they're not really good for my body when I'm hiking up mountains. But trail mix, on the other hand, is really good and has all the things I need to fuel my bodies for the peaks and to study the birds. But since I'm also going into bear country, I have to pack all my food in a bear can to keep my food protected and bears away. They're also really difficult to open so bears can't get into them. Give me a second. I'm finally in. Okay, so not only do I have my food in my bear canister, but I also have my mess kit so I can cook my food. That includes my stove, my fuel source, my pot, which also doubles as a coffee mug in the morning and tea at night, my magnesium rod, which helps me to light my fuel source, which is my propane canister, and finally, my spork. So I can eat all my delicious food. All well, that's really important while I'm out on the trail. Next system, water. Now, it is very, very, very important whenever you go adventuring in the wilderness to always make sure you bring enough water. But when you're backpacking or going on an ex expedition just like me, then sometimes you're gone for several weeks and man, that's a lot of water to pack. So, we always look for water sources in the wilderness. But even though you find a water source in the wilderness, it doesn't mean you should drink it. No, no, no. Even though mountain water looks really scrumptious and delicious, it actually can contain dangerous bacteria and microorganisms that can cause you to get sick. So, I always carry water filtration system. I've got my pouch and my water filter. And it takes out all those little bad things that might make me sick and it makes it so I can drink the mountain water. Very important. Next system, clothing. What you wear on the trail is really important too because the weather can change like that and it can get hot and then it can get cold. And so I use a system called the layering system when I go backpacking, which means I have different layers that serve different functions. For example, I might wear this wicking layer when I'm hiking to keep me cool and the sweat off my body so I don't overheat, but I might also use this layer at nighttime to keep me warm and snugly and insulate my body. Layers are important, but I also pack extra socks and some extra clothes just in case the weather turns and I'm not prepared. I also bring weather gear, like a rain jacket, just in case it rains unexpectedly. Okay, the next system is my toiletries, which include my toothbrush and toothpaste and hand sanitizer and toilet paper and a shovel, just in case you need to go, because it happens. And finally, last but not least, is my shelter system. Now, my shelter system consists of three primary things. First, the sleeping bag. <laughs> keep me warm and snugly at nighttime. But I also use a sleeping pad. Mine's inflatable, so I blow it up and I sleep on it as like an air mattress that's portable. Finally, I use something called a bivy, which is basically a giant sack you put all of that in to keep you warm and dry. 
Now, I do this because it keeps down the weight. Because you know, when you're on a science expedition, your pack can get really heavy really fast. So unless I know the weather's gonna be bad, then I won't bring a tent, I will bring my bivy. But if I know the weather's probably gonna be bad, then I'll bring a tent, regardless. Now, the last few things I bring are not essential on the trail, but they're important when I go out into the wilderness. The first thing is my Bible, because there's no better way than to read your Bible and spend time with God and his creation. It's just beautiful, and I love it. But I also have to bring a notebook to record the nesting habits of the mountain chicken. Well, it looks like I'm all ready to go. Thanks for helping me pack today. And now I'm all prepared for my expedition. I just have to um, get this all back in here somehow. And I'll start this one. The word of the day is prepare. Prepare means to make something ready beforehand for some use, purpose, or activity. But it can also mean making someone ready for a particular use or activity. For instance, let's say to prepare dinner, we must first get our ingredients ready and we go to the store and get every bit of food we need to make the big dinner. Then we can prepare food for our family. Or, let's say you want to play in the big soccer game or the big football game. You must first practice, practice, practice to prepare for the big game. In the same way, God calls us to always be prepared to tell anyone who asks us why we believe in Jesus. So I ask you, are you prepared to give that answer? Hey guys, Allison here. Today, we have an amazing memory verse, but instead of breaking it up into two parts like we usually do, we're gonna try to run through it all together, but we're gonna take it slow, because it's a really good one. So first, I'm gonna show you what it is. It goes like this. 1 Peter 3, 15b. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. 1 Peter 3, 15b. Awesome job. So we're gonna start slow. Follow with me, ready? Always. So you're gonna take your pointer finger, go in a circle, because it's like the clock. All, the entire clock. You never know what time it could be, whenever, but you always have to be ready. Ready? So always be ready. So two fists go down because you're super sure that you're ready. You can do this when, whatever time it's gonna be. Always be ready to give. So remember, we've done this one before. Two hands, your palms up, and push them out because you're giving. So always be ready to give an answer. So for answer, we're gonna take our pointer finger, touch our thumb, and then point out. Always be ready to give an answer, and the next part is to anyone. That one's easy, you can do that one. Just point out, because it could really be anyone. We have no idea who it could be, but we're always ready no matter who it is. So let's try what we got together, ready? Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks. So for asks, we're gonna take our pointer finger again, but this time point it towards us and then curl it. Kinda like a candy cane if you can see that. See, kinda looks like a candy cane. So let's try it together. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope. So for hope, we're gonna take both of our hands, point them in towards each other, one higher, one lower, and then kinda like the candy cane again, push them in like this, so the hope. Okay, let's try it together. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. And for that, you're gonna point to you because this one is about you. It's about you and only you because you're the one who's gonna be sharing about Jesus. So let's try it together, ready? Let's see if we can do it two times. Here we go. First Peter 3, 15b. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. Good job, guys. Let's try one more time. Ready? Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you have. 1 Peter 3, 15b. Awesome job, guys. Hey, guys. 
today we are going to look up our Bible story. We are going to look up Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Let's do it. All right, guys. So remember, we're going to start in our table of contents, and we are going to be looking up Acts. If you guys remember, Acts is in our New Testament. So we're going to start on this side, and we're going to look for Acts. Perfect. It is right there. Mine's on page 1,316. Let's go. Perfect, here we are in Acts. All right, now we're gonna look through our chapter numbers, which are the big numbers, and we're looking for chapter eight. All right, let's do it. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. And now we're looking for verse 26. So we have to look for the little numbers through the words. All right, this one ends on, I think, nine. So we gotta flip the page. Let's keep going. There's 14, 18, 20, almost there. 24, 25, and 26. Good job, we found Acts chapter eight, verse 26. This is where our story is gonna start today. Maybe it means you acted out like charades and people have to guess? Or maybe it's like those clowns who don't say things. What are they called, minis? Mums? Mimes, they're called mimes. Mimes, yeah. Maybe that's what it means, you mime it. I still don't get it. Yeah, me neither. There's Merle over there. Let's ask her. Merle! Merle. Oh, Merle! Oh, hey guys. Um, Raj, what's with the, uh, the mustache? It's in honor of Father's Day. Oh, well, it looks really good. Thank um, you. So, do you guys have a question? What's going on? Yes, I have a question. Last week, you told me to look for opportunities to share Jesus using my words. Yeah, how do you share Jesus without using words? Well, great question. We want others to know and find and follow Jesus, right? Right. right. Well, when we're loving others, that's one way that we're showing people what Jesus is all about. When we're truly caring, when we're listening and showing kindness, we're reflecting Jesus. And that's what it means to be the moon. Oh, so when we are being the moon, that's when we're sharing about Jesus without actually telling someone about him. Exactly, but there's gonna be lots of times that we need to open our mouth, use our words, and tell someone about Jesus and explain what it is that Jesus did for us. And we need to be looking for opportunities to do that. Can you tell us more about that? Well, the Bible sure can. Today we're in Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And you can read along while we watch and listen to our story. But I want you to look for how Philip shared the gospel using his words. Stories of the Bible, Philip and the Ethiopian. This is Philip. Hello who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Philip preached the good news of Jesus in many places. One day, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, go south down the desert road. I hear that. So Philip started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. The man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning to Ethiopia. He was in his carriage reading the book of Isaiah out loud. Hey there. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Okay, I can do that. Philip ran over and heard the man reading and asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I, unless someone teaches me? Come on up here. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Those parts here. The Ethiopian asked Philip, Tell me, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture in Isaiah, Philip told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. Wait, 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 hold on. 
and the Ethiopian said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop. Stop! And they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and took him to another town. The Ethiopian never saw Philip again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip was snatched away? Snatched like is in poof? Wow, that is wild. <laughs> You're right, it's pretty wild. But don't worry, Philip shows up in our story in a little bit. And tells us that he was not injured in the pooping process. But let's go back to the beginning of the story and talk about how Philip shared the gospel using his words. What's the first thing that happened? The first thing. Oh, the first thing was an angel told him where to go. <laughs> exactly. But look, it's not very common that an angel is just going to show up and give us really clear directions. But you guys, we have the Holy Spirit who can nudge us. And we can even start our day with prayers that go like this. God, what is it that you want me to do today? Or when we're out and about and we walk into a room and there's people there, we can say, God, show me who you want me to talk to. And then obey, because Philip did what God wanted him to do right away. Yeah, he ran right up to the chariot and then he watched and listened. That's when he heard the man reading the Bible. Right, Philip was looking for an opportunity. And when the opportunity came, he shared the good news. He was ready. That sounds a lot like our memory verse today. Oh, I know it. It's 1 Peter 3, 15b. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. I want to be ready. I want to share the hope I have. How do I do that? This is just like Sarah getting ready for her science expedition and packing all of her stuff. She wanted to be sure she was ready and prepared. We want to be ready and prepared too. That's right. And for starters, we need to be making sure that we're growing closer to God and learning more about Him. That's like reading our Bible, going to church, and praying and stuff. That's right. And being ready, it means being willing so that when an opportunity comes, we don't miss it. We never know when it would be. It could be when we're outside playing with our neighbors or when we're at baseball practice or even the grocery store. What if someone asks me a question about God that I don't know the answer to? Well, we have to remember, I don't know everything, no one does. And it's okay to tell people, you know what, I don't know, but let's go find out together. And then you can look in your Bible or ask a parent to help you find the answer. But Merle, what if I say something wrong or I mess up the words or they don't believe me or I get scared or they think I'm different? I get it, Allie. It, it can be a little scary sometimes when we're talking about Jesus because we don't wanna mess up. But remember, God is with us, and we have a Holy Spirit who can help us be bold and to help us with our words. And honestly, Allie, if someone thinks you're different because you're doing what God wants you to do, that's okay. Our job is to be obedient. Philip probably didn't know what the Ethiopian man was going to do or if he was going to become a Christian, but Philip did what he was supposed to do anyway. That's right. You know, ultimately, it was up to the Ethiopian man if he was going to become a follower of Jesus. But Philip was willing and he was ready and he was obedient. And God was able to use him in a really awesome way because of it. And we want to be able and useful for God so that we're ready when he calls on us to do the same. And in just a little bit, Miss Paula is going to show us this really cool way to explain to others what Jesus did for us. That would help me feel even more ready to share. I can't wait to see what it is. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Howdy, y'all. So today, in honor of Father's Day, we're going to make an awesome craft. It's actually a card that you can give your father, and it opens up to say, I love you this much. Ready? Let's go make it. Okay, guys, you ready to make this Father's Day card? I am too. 
So today for craft, you're gonna need paper, either colored or white paper, markers, a glue stick, and scissors. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna use white paper today. You're gonna need to start with one piece of white paper. We're gonna fold this piece of paper so that the narrower edges meet, okay? Just like that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a light colored marker, like my gray one here, and we are going to trace our hand. So put your hand on the paper and then you're gonna take your marker and you're gonna trace all along the outside of your fingers like this. Right to your wrist. And then you'll just connect those two lines together like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this out. Remember, we're cutting both sides together. Okay, so now you should have two handprints, just like this. Okay, now I wanna color my hands so they look kind of fun. Um, so I'm gonna put a piece of paper under my hands just so that I don't get any marker on the table. Now my dad loves the outdoors, so I'm gonna color my hands blue. And I'm just gonna trace the outside of my fingers like this. Now my dad, he loves to kayak. It's one of his favorite things to do. So I'm going to color my hands blue so they, they look more like the ocean. That's one of his favorite activities. You know, this craft reminds me of when I was living in Hawaii. I went on a backpacking trip from one valley called Waimanu to another valley called Waipio. It was right around Father's Day and I missed my dad because he didn't live on the island with me. So while I was backpacking, when we got to the bottom of the valley, I just looked so big and so vast that I took a picture of my arms spread out as wide as they could. And then I sent that picture to my dad with the words written on it, I love you this much. And so this craft in spot was inspired by that story. So I sent that photo to my dad for Father's Day and he loved it. It's still on the fridge today. Okay. There we are. So I've got my two hands colored and I'm going to color on the left hand the words, I love you. So I'm gonna write those words on here. I love you. And you could write them on the last, on the right hand as well. I think I'm gonna sign my name on the right hand. Love, Sarah. On that hand. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need another piece of paper. And I'm gonna use white again. And I'm gonna fold this piece of paper about an inch down on the long edge. So that's about two fingers width. On the long edge, like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut this little strip out. Okay, so now that this strip is cut out, I'm gonna fold it in half. Then I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I'm gonna fold it in half one more time. So I'm gonna fold it in half four times. 
Okay, so then when I unfold it, it should have eight boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So I'm gonna pick two colors. I'm going to write the first word in this light blue. The first word is this. So T H I S. Okay. And for the second one, I'm gonna do that in a darker blue. The first word is this, the second word is much. M U C H. Perfect, good job. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fold my paper together. I'm gonna fold the T to match the H. And then I'm gonna fold it back like this. The I to match the S. Fold it back. The M to match the U. Fold it back and the C to match the H. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my two hands and I'm gonna flip them the other way around. I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm gonna add some glue right in the middle of this hand here. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the side has the T on it, and I'm only going to put the this half of the T down on here. I don't want to put the whole thing down, just the first half. Okay, like that. And then I'm actually going to fold that over again so that we're folding the T in half. Very good. Okay, so now that the T is folded in half like this, I'm going to do that for every single letter. So you see how there's this side of the square and then there's this side? I'm gonna fold this side to meet this edge here. So I'm gonna be folding all of these in half again, just like this. Okay, and then finally this last H in half. I'm gonna take my glue stick, I'm gonna add some glue onto the other part of my little accordion here. And then I'm gonna put my hands together and smash it down really good. So I wanna make sure that sticks. Smash, smash, smash. Okay, so now when you open it up, it should say this much. Here we go. I love you this much. And then to fold the card back up, you're just gonna fold your accordion back in like this. And there you go, we've got an awesome Father's Day card. Good job, guys. Your dads are gonna love it. Hey kids, you know what time it is? That's right, it's time for the review game. Here we go, question number one. How did Philip respond when the angel told him to go south on the road? Did he A, waited until he knew the whole plan, B, he obeyed right away, or C, he went home and packed his bags and threw himself a goodbye party? The answer is B. Philip immediately obeyed and started out on his way. Question number two, true or false? God wants me to start running after bicycles, motorcycles, and cars so I can be just like Philip. Is this true or false? The answer is false. The Holy Spirit gave Philip those specific instructions. God wants us to be ready to go when he gives us specific instructions too. Question number three, how can I be ready to share my faith with others? Is it A, grow closer to God by talking to him, reading the Bible and going to church? Is it B, practice talking about Jesus? Is it C, talk to other Christians about how the Holy Spirit helps them? Or is it D, all of the above? The answer is D, all of the above. Question four, true or false? God wants me to know all the right answers before I begin telling others about Jesus. Is this true or false? The answer is false. We can start talking about Jesus now, even if we don't have all the answers. Question number five, true or false? If I do a good enough job reflecting Jesus by how I love others and pray for them, that I won't have to use words to share Jesus. Is this true 
or false? The answer is false. Loving others and praying for them is very important, but it doesn't tell people what Jesus did for them or explain how to become a Christian. Thanks for playing, everybody. Great job. Hi, I'm Paula, and today we learn both from our Bible story and our memory verse that we're always supposed to be ready with an answer if someone asks us about Jesus or we just see an opportunity to tell someone about Jesus. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to draw a picture that tells the story about Jesus. And if you practice it, you will always be ready. Okay guys, you ready to draw? For this practice one, I want you to grab a piece of paper and a pen, pencil, marker, crayon, just something to write with so we can practice our drawing. But what's so great about this way of telling the story of Jesus is you don't even have to have paper and pencil. You can use a stick in the dirt outside. You can use your finger in wet sand. You can use the placemat at a restaurant, the back of a napkin, a piece of scratch paper. You just need some way to draw while you tell the story. And here's how it goes. You're gonna draw two shapes. One looks like a seven. You make it over on this side and then you flip it over and make it again over here. And I'm gonna to explain to you what this is. That's the beginning of our story. And this is actually a cliff. So I'm gonna kind of make it look like a cliff. You don't have to, you can leave it just looking like those sevens. But I'm gonna make mine look kind of like a cliff because I want people to see that there's a big gap in the middle. And this is what you say. God, so I'm gonna write the word God over here. And if you don't want to write the whole word, you can just put a big G and put marks around it because God is our big God. And he created us. So I'm going to draw a little stick person over here because this is me or any of us. God created us to have a relationship with him. But we have a problem and that's that we're sinners and our sin separates us from God. And there's no way for us who are sinners who do things that are wrong. Sometimes we're selfish or we're mean and unkind, or we're even cruel. And when we're that way, we can't be with God because He's perfect and holy. And God knew we had this problem and He wants us so much to be with Him. So God had a plan. He loved us so much. So then you draw a heart right here at the top. God loved us so much that He sent His one and only Son. Do you know who that is? Yes, it's Jesus. So right here, I'm gonna put a big J, but I'm actually gonna spell out Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. You could just put a big J there. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to do what? To die on the cross, to make a way for us. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes straight over here because I'm making a cross and the top of my cross is gonna be that heart coming down to the line and then I'm gonna draw a line over here. That's the crossbar of the cross. And then I'm gonna come way down here to make the rest of the cross. Because God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And if we will tell God we're sorry that we're sinners and we would like him to forgive us of our sins, the Bible says God promises to forgive us our sins and it makes a way for us to God where we can have a relationship with him for all eternity. Okay, that's the whole story of Jesus. So let me show you the main points again. You start with the line that looks like a back, that looks like a seven, and then you flip it over and make the backwards one over here. Then you talk about God and how God created us, that's the stick figure over here, to have a relationship with him. But there's a problem and it's that we're sinners and our sin keeps us separate from God. And there's no way for us to get to God, but God knew that and so he had a plan and he had a rescue plan with the Savior. And so God loved us so much, so you can put a heart at the top, that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, right here. And what did Jesus do? He died on the cross to make a way for us. So draw your line that goes all the way across the gap, and then you can go all the way up here to the heart, which is the top of the cross, and make the bottom part down here, and make the other part across. God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross to make a way for us to get to him. And if we will confess our sins and tell God that we need him, then he will forgive us 
and it makes a way for us to be with God forever. So now practice this drawing because then you'll always be ready with an answer to tell the story of Jesus. Hey guys, had a great time this week. I know you did too. In fact, I have a great time every week spending time with you. This week we learned to be ready at all times to talk about Jesus. We learned a cool way to draw different ways to learn about Jesus. So draw in the sand, draw in the dirt, draw a picture on a piece of paper with your favorite colors and stick it on the refrigerator so everybody can see and remind yourself that no matter what at all times, talk about Jesus. Have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time. Awesome job, guys. Happy Father's Day to all the dads. Happy Father's Day to you. Um, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Happy Father's Day! Always touch your ear like this because it's fun. Happy Father's Day!